Oh, the irony. <laughs> he was remembering his father's reply to the queries from faithful followers as to what had brought tears to his eyes. The Abbas who had wetted his body with water in the process of quenching Hussein's thirst would in the not too distant future wet his body with his own blood in attempting to quench the thirst of his young children. He was vividly seeing the scene on the 21st of Ramadan, way back in 40 Hijra, when his father, mortally wounded, was lying on his deathbed and entrusting his children in dependence to the care of his eldest brother Hassan. All except him. Seeing that his father had commanded all but him to the care of Hassan, how he, a child of 12, had burst out into uncontrollable tears. His father, on hearing him sobbing, had called him to his side and given his hand in Hussein's hand with the words, Hussein, this child I'm entrusting to you, he will represent me on the day of your supreme sacrifice and lay down his life in depending you and your dear ones, much as I would have done if alive on that day. How his father turned to him and affectionately told him, Abbas, my child, I know your unbounded love for Hussein, though you are too young to be told about it when the day of dawns, consider no sacrifice too great for Hussein and his children. He saw before his mind's eyes that parting with his aged mother Fatima and Medina, how she had affectionately embraced him and reminded him of his di dying desire of his father to lay down his life in the defense of Hussein and his dear ones. A faint smile of satisfaction flickered for a brief moment on his parched lips. A smile of satisfaction that he had fulfilled his father's wishes, that he had performed his duty for which he was brought up. It just flitted for a moment and vanished as other scenes became before his mind's eyes. He was reliving the events of the night before. He was seeing Shimmer, stealthily coming to him and talking to him about his ties of relationship, about the protection he had been promised for Abbas by the commander of Yazid's forces, only if he would leave Hussein and go to Yazid's camp, about the promises of riches and rewards that he would get, how he had spurned the suggestion of Shimmer with the utmost disdain to the charging of that servile minion who had sold his soul for a mess of pottage. How he had scared away that coward by his scathing race saying, You worshipper, do not think that Abbas will be lured by your tempting offer of power and pelt. If I die in defending my master Hussein, I shall consider myself the luckiest person. Oh coward, 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 remember that valiance died but once. Nobody is born to live eternally. By betraying my master, you have betrayed the prophet whose religion you profess to follow. On the day of judgment, you will be doomed to eternal perdition. I am ashamed to own any relationship with you. Had it not been for the fact that you have come here or not, I would have given you the chastisement you deserve for your impudence in asking me to become a turncoat. How that wretch had scampered from there seeing him roaring like an enraged lion. The thought of that unpleasant interlude contracted his brows. Or was it the excruciating pain he was suffering on the account of the deep gashes he had all over his body? Yet he's... Yet another scene passed before Abbas's eyes. Sakina, leading 42 children, each with a dry water bag. The children were shouting as if in chorus. Thirst. Consuming thirst. Thirst is killing us. Sakina coming to him, putting a dry water bag at his feet and saying, Oh, uncle. I know you will do something to get water for us. Even if you can bring us one bag full of water, we can wet our parched throats. He could see that thirst, aggravated by the scorching heat of the desert, was squeezing their young lives out of them. The sight of these youngsters had moved him more than any of the soul-stirring events on that day. 
how he had picked up the water back with the shores of Sakina, that he would go and bring water. How he had taken Hussein's permission and marched out of the camp with a sword in one hand, the flag in the other, the bag on his shoulder. With the children following him in a group to the outer perimeter of the camp, Hussein had repeatedly requested him to avoid fighting as much as possible and confine him to the cell for bringing water. His thoughts switched over to the events that preceded his fall from the horse. With the object of procuring water for his dear little Sakina, he had charged the enemy who held the river banks. He had run through the enemy ranks like a knife through butter. Against his surging onslaught, the cowards could not stand and had run helter-skelter shouting for protection. For a moment it seemed as if Ali, the line of God, had descended from heaven. In no time Abbas was near the rivulet. He had jumped down from the horse and bent to fill in the water bag. When it was filled to, filled to the brim, he had taken some water in his cupped hand to drink and satisfy his killing thirst. But, in second thoughts, he had thrown this water away. How could he drink when Sakina and the children were still withering without him? How could he be so callous as to forget that his master Hussein had not had a drop of water since the last three days? He had turned to his horse which had been let loose so that he could satisfy his thirst. Zuljana had been looking intently at his master just to say, I too am aware that so long as our master and his children remain without water, our thirst cannot be quenched. With the water bag he filled, he had jumped into the saddle with one thought in his mind to get the water to the waiting children as quickly as possible. Seeing him galloping towards the camp of Hussein, the enemy turned. Somebody shouted from the enemy ranks that if Hussein and his people got water, it would be difficult to fight them on the battlefield. Though it wasn't an even fight. He fought with valor which was so characteristic of his fathers. Though he was thirsty and hungry, he charged on them and scattered them. The mercenaries of Yazid were running like lambs in a fold when charged by a lion. Seeing that a frontal assault on a man so brave was not possible, they had resorted to a barrage of arrows on this man. When arrows were coming from all sides, Abbas had only one thought in his mind. How to protect the water bag in his life? Seeing that Abbas was preoccupied with this thought, one treacherous throat. Hiding behind the sand, you rushed out and dealt a blow on his right hand and cut it off. In a flash, Abbas transferred his sword to his left hand and the standard was bearing he hooked to his chest. Now that the line of Ali was crippled, the foes had the courage to surround him. A blow from the enemy sword severed his left arm. The odds were now mounted against him. He held the bag with his teeth and protected the flag with his chest pressed on the horse's back. Now the paramount thought in his mind was to reach the camp somehow or the other. Merciful Allah, spare me long enough to fulfill my mission. But that was not to be. An arrow pierced the water bag. Water started gushing out. Was it water that was flowing out the bag or the hopes of a bus? All these efforts had been in vain. After all, Sakina's thirst would remain unsatisfied and all her hopes would be frustrated. One of them came near him and struck him a mortal blow with an iron mace. He reeled over, he fell from the horse. He tossed on the sand with burning, excruciating pain. His life was ebbing fast out of him, but his only wish was to see his master. With one last effort, he shouted, My master, do come before me before I die. As if in answer to his prayers, he felt some footsteps near him. His instinct told him it was his master. His one eye had been blinded by an arrow. The other had been filled with blood, so he could not see. But he felt his master kneeling beside him, lifting his head and taking it into his lap. Not a word was said for a few seconds because they were both choked with emotion. At last he heard Hussein's voice. 
a boss, my brother, what have they done to you? If a boss could see, would he have recognized his master? His back was bent, his beard had turned white. On hearing the parting cry of his beloved brother, Hussein's plight was such that nobody could have recognized him. Abbas was now feeling the loving touch of his master's hand. You have come at last, my master. I thought I was not destined to have a last farewell with you, but thank God you are here. With these words, he put his head on the sand. <laughs> Hussein lifted his head again and put it on his lap, asking why he had removed it. My master, the thought that when you will be breathing your last, nobody will be there to put your head in a lap to comfort you, makes me feel that it would be better if my head lies on the sand when I die, just as yours would be. Besides, I am your slave, and you are my master. It is too much for me to put my head on your lap. But say birth into tears. The sight of his brother, whose name was to become a byword for devotion and playfulness, <laughs> laying down on his, his dear life was hard and quick. Abbas said, My master, I have some wishes to express. When I was born, I had my first look at your face. And this is my last desire that when I die, my, my gaze may be on it too. My one eye is pierced by an arrow, my other eye is filled with blood. If you clear the blood from my one eye, I'll be able to see you and fulfill my last desire. My second wish is that when I die, you may not carry my body back to the camp. I had promised to bring water to Sakina, and since I have failed in the attempt to bring her water, I cannot face her, even in death. Besides, I know that the blows you have received this morning have all but crushed you. And carrying my body to the camp will be heartbreaking for you. And my third wish is that Sakina may not be brought here to see my plight. I know with what love and affection she was devoted to me. The sight of my dead body lying here will kill her. Hussein promised to him he would carry out his wishes and added, Abbas, I too have a wish to be fulfilled. Since childhood you have always called me master. For once at least call me brother with your last dying breath. The blood was cleared from the Abbas's eye. One brother looked at the other brother with a long, lingering, lingering look. Abbas was heard to whisper, My brother, my brother. And with these words, he surrendered his soul to his maker. Hussein fell unconscious on the dead of the body of Abbas. And with a cry, he said, Oh, Abbas, who is left to protect me and Sakina after you?